Professor Mander, in a recent paper, you use an uh, old tale to summarize and uh, communicate uh, in a very, very clear and simple manner what are the difficulties we face even when we talk about the people that is convinced. I guess that uh, this tale about the elephant in the security could summarize what, is, what are the additional difficulties we face. Can you build on this? Yeah, you know, why I, I came to that story in the context of the right to food was that I, you know, for many years I've been part of discussions and I felt that, that in these discussions people were largely not talking to each other, they were talking at each other. They were talking about different things. They were completely convinced that they were right. And they had the answer and everybody else was wrong. And it confused me and I just couldn't understand. And then slowly it occurred to me that actually all of them were right. But all of them were incompletely right. You know, and and and, 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 and that that is what drew me to this very beautiful old uh, Indian uh, table. Uh, it's about five blind men, not women for some reason, but five blind men who are trying to understand what an elephant looks like. So one catches hold of the tail and says, oh, it's like a rope. One catches hold of the leg and says, it's like a pillar. One touches the, the side and says, it's like a big wall. Uh, one says, uh, you know, catches the ear and says, it's like a fan with the flapping. One catches the tusks and says, it's a hard cone. And if you think about it, they were all right, but all of them were so incompletely right that if they were convinced that only they were right, they would have no sense of what the elephant was about. And it's in this way that I try to understand these many debates on the right to food. So the first set, I mean, if you, if you think of five blind men again, uh, the first, you know, and the elephant is, is the continuance of hunger and malnutrition in our countries. But then I would say that the first set uh, are people who are looking at uh, at food production, uh, farmers' uh, protection, sustainable agriculture practices, uh, 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 procurement, uh, technologies, uh, all of this. Uh, so that's one set of people uh, there. Then the, the second part and a very important set of debates is around food sovereignty. That is not enough to produce enough food the food grower must be in control of his or her food production systems, markets, inputs. So seed sovereignty, uh, uh, local uh, fertilizers, um, uh, local markets. So they focus on, on that as being uh, a way forward. There's a third set of people who work on what I would call the non-food uh, uh, determinants of nutrition. So you might get enough food as a child, but if you drink uh, dirty water or you, 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 you defecate and there's no cleaning place, uh, there's no sewerage, uh, you don't have health care, you won't absorb your food. So uh, health, uh, water sanitation, and there's some people in India who, I mean some scholars recently say that perhaps the missing link in India's uh, you know, continuing hunger paradox is sanitation because uh, uh, we have very high levels of open defecation. My, my, my problem is again that they are right but incompletely right. That is again not these, the answer, it's one of many answers and, and, and so on. And then the fourth relates to what I would broadly call the field of e equity. So gender inequality. So uh, even within a household a woman eats least, eats last, her, her problem. We have castes, so the lower castes are not able to access both land, resources, uh, livelihoods, uh, uh, indigenous communities. Uh, so, uh, and then also the whole area of decent work. So, if you are denied labor protection uh, as an informal worker, you don't get minimum wages, you don't get get uh, social protection, social security. Decent work itself, its failures result to uh, a situation of, of being exposed to hunger. So these are all issues that I club into the fourth category of issues of class, caste, gender, uh, equality uh, and so on. And the last is what we 
generally have been talking about say in India is about failures of the duty to provision food uh, through a public distribution system, through school meals and so on. And all of these, only when I believe that only when all of these are understood together will we see the full elephant. So there's another version of that story which was written in Persia by a poet called Rumi where he said it's not five blind men, they're five sighted men and this elephant has come from India and nobody knows what it looks like and they go into a dark room and then they have the same confusions, they touch different portions and he says at the end of his poem he says if only uh, they lit a, a torch each and they went in together then they would be able to understand and see the full elephant and I think that's that's precisely what we need to do as scholars, activists, policy makers who want to understand uh, uh, the, the big elephant of continuing hunger we have to see all aspects of it together.